Hello everyone, I am Sita Strabibi from Chemical Engineering Department and my research is related to the conversion of CO2 to value-added hydrocarbons using bifunctional catalysts. For over 200 years, utilization of carbon-rich fossil fuels such as coal, oil and natural gas gave rise to huge amount of CO2 emissions which brings about adverse climatic changes. So converting CO2 from a detrimental greenhouse gas into value-added chemicals and fuels is quite a good approach. So two major approaches are used. One is the CO2 capture and the next is the CO2 utilization to get the variable products and to decrease the CO2 concentration in the atmosphere. So the, what is the importance and the methods for the CO2 reduction? So as we all know that the world population is increasing day by day and the world population in 2050 is expected to be 9 to 9.5 billion which means that with the increase of this much population the crude oil reserves are estimated to be only last until 2084 and the, since 1850 the co2 levels in the atmosphere which were stable between 200 to 280 parts per million and but for the past four uh, years it have risen to 410 parts per million so the level of co2 it increases too much into the atmosphere during the past few years so we have to mitigate this co2 in from the atmosphere to get some useful products from it so we can get benefit from this co2 reduction that we can get some useful products also and we can also decrease the concentration of the co2 into the atmosphere so the two major strategies can be used one is the carbon capture and the sequestration and the other one is the second one is the carbon dioxide hydrogenation and carbon capture and the sequestration we can control the co2 emission we can capture the co2 by the different means and then after capturing the co2 it can be uh, reduced to the different products different hydrocarbons via three different processes like the it we have the photochemical co2 reduction thermochemical co2 reduction and electrochemical co2 reduction each and every process has its own advantages and disadvantages like in case of the photochemical it has the lower conversion and the poor selectivity with the least carbon carbon coupling while in case of the thermochemical co2 reduction it has the high conversion and the promising selectivity with the excellent carbon carbon coupling and in case of the electrochemical co2 reduction it has the lower conversion and the poor selectivity with the least carbon carbon coupling Mostly the people use this thermochemical uh, CO2 reduction and with the, use, with the help of the useful catalyst to convert the CO2 into the hydrocarbons. And what type of products we can get from the CO2 hydrogenation? We can get the carbon monoxide, methane, aromatics, hydrocarbons, high alcohols, acids, methanols, etc. And all these different products depend upon the type of the catalyst which we use for the CO2 reduction. And what are the different possible rules for the CO2 hydrogenation? The CO2 can be hydrogenated into the hydrocarbons by either direct or indirect routes. The direct route is often described as the combination of the reduction of CO2 to CO via reverse water gas shift reaction and the subsequent followed by the subsequent hydrogenation of the co to the hydrocarbons using the ft uh, fischer drops synthesis reaction this one is the direct route which is the combination of the reverse water gas shift reaction and the fischer drops reaction while in case of the indirect route it involves the methanol as an intermediate and this is the methanol mediated pathway which then gives the hydrocarbons and there is one another reaction in which the CO2 
is directly converted to the methane by using the Sabatier reaction catalyst. And all these direct and indirect route, they utilize some kind of the catalyst, like we have the different types of catalyst from the transition metal. Um, like for example, we have the cobalt catalyst, iron catalyst, nickel, copper, zinc, zirconia. So we can use these different types of catalysts to convert to reduce the CO2 into some useful products. Like in case of and each and every catalyst is its own specialty and the type of the particular products. Like in case of the cobalt, the major product will be the paraffins, and in case of iron, the major products will be the olefins. But in case of the cobalt, along with the paraffins, the other byproduct which we get in as a major product as a major byproduct is also the methane and which is not that much useful product as compared to the hydrocarbon while in case of the iron catalyst the major products will be the olefins but along with the olefins the other major byproduct is the uh, carbon monoxide which is also that not that much useful as compared to the olefins so in order designing the catalyst is, is important that we can use some sort of the metal oxide promoters along with the catalyst, main catalyst. So to design such a promis uh, promissible catalyst, which will give us the high hydrocarbon in a good yield. And the, there are the different mechanisms for the fischer proxy reaction. And the, there are the three main mechanisms which, we, which were proposed for the fischer tropsy reaction. The carbine mechanism, CO insertion mechanism and hydroxy carbene mechanism and all these three mechanisms can be divided into three elementary steps chain initiation chain growth and chain termination and in case of the carbide mechanism it presumes the direct dissociation of CO and hydrogen followed by the hydrogenation of carbon atoms and the polymerization of the CHX groups and the chain termination takes place either by the abstraction or addition of a hydrogen atom from or to the chain. And in case of the CO insertion mechanism, it proposes the adsorption of CO followed by reaction with hydrogen atom on the surface to form an aldehyde functionality. And then the chain growth takes place either by insertion of CO and the chain termination will take place by the hydrogenation. And the third mechanism is the hydroxycarbene mechanism, which proposes the adsorption of CO followed by reaction with hydrogen atom on the surface to form the hydroxycarbene group. And the chain growth takes place by the condensation polymerization along with the removal of water molecule and the chain termination will proceed via hydrogenation reaction. These are the different mechanisms which were proposed for the fischer tropsy reaction. And in every catalyst, one of the mechanism is dominant, that, or the two mechanisms, they are occurring side by side, and one of the mechanism is dominant. So we have to sort out that uh, in which catalyst, that which reaction will be the dominant, and what will be the possible route for the formation of the hydrocarbons. So along with the metal oxides as a promoter, we can also use some sort of supports for the conversion of the CO2 into the high hydrocarbons. So regarding the conclusion, the utilization of CO2 as the carbon source to produce hydrocarbon is an effective way to introduce the renewable energy in the chemical industry value chain while improving the resource efficiency and limiting greenhouse emission. So using this approach, it's a promissible approach for converting the CO2 into the higher hydrocarbons, which will, can be used for the industrial purposes, like we can use as a gasoline, LPG, petroleum products. So it is a quite good approach to mitigate the atmospheric high concentration of the CO2 into some useful products in the environment. Thank you so much.